Three, two, one. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Panda back with another video. Hope you guys are doing well. I know I am. And uh, I just want to say this video was an absolute massive monster video to make, and I'm glad I get to bring it to you guys because it's very, very well needed. As a lot of you guys have seen, I've been playing on Ascension private server. It is it's classless, and as you guys have seen, maybe they are coming out with new 21 classes. They're featuring Pyromancer, Necromancer. You become a fucking scorpion. Like the, it, it's so cool what this private server is coming out with and i'm very excited but today i bring you a, a a beginner's guide to ascension ascension and i don't mean to be rude when i say this but it's content based when it comes to like content creators uh there's not a lot of very informative videos out there when it comes to a do a b and c you know what i'm saying and i know the game as a whole is kind of hard to do that because the learning curve for uh you know project ascension is very very high and you know half like i think it's in i think it's two uh, one in every three accounts that are made uh end up not even playing and just giving up because it's so difficult so this video step by step will show you everything to do on your way to 60 when you start level one going up to 60 and what to do when you finally hit 60. we'll be covering literally everything ascension in this video and again there'll be timestamps down um on the time bar and in description so if you'd like to go back and re-watch anything or if you guys have any questions leave it down in the comments message me on discord whatever you guys need i will eventually answer you now i also understand if, if you guys are those people that are like Oh, well, Panda, uh, private servers are illegal, and, uh, uh, Ascension's pay to win. Uh, that server's dog shit. Just know that this is kind of really, honestly, the only private server that I've played that actually has good developers that genuinely care about the player base in the game. So, uh, enough about, enough about all that. Let's hop right into the video, shall we? Right off the bat, we'll be starting how to download the game, how to get add-ons for the game, and what server you should be picking when you absolutely, you know, when you hop into the game. So as you see on the screen, you're going to want to Google ascension.gg. The link for it will be down in the description. And you're going to be greeted with this screen. You're going to want to create an account and then you literally just click play now and you will download. I'm pretty sure it's the 3.5 uh, client, which is the final patch to Wrath of the Lich King. So again, you know, Ascension does have all the Wrath of the Lich King abilities and basically everything that retains around Wrath. It has all of that. Once you've downloaded it, we're going to go ahead and move to the launcher. When you move to the launcher, this is what you're going to see. Basically, everything. Everything that you need to see, the news, and all of that. Uh, but more importantly, before we hop right into it, I'm going to cover add-ons real quick. Uh, uh, Ascension does have some integrated add-ons as well. They have like DPS meter, they have Atlas loot, bartender, uh, Skada DPS meter, all stats, weak auras, like power auras, Omni CC, and action bar saver, bartender. They have like the core essentials, but if you'd like any other add-ons, I'm going to show you a site where you can go and get them. So as you noticed in the launcher, there are some add-ons that are not in there, or maybe there's some that you don't like. Skata is a DPS, ad, basically a DPS meter that is absolute dog shit. So, you know, maybe you want to go and outsource your own, you know, add-ons. Well, you're, I will leave the link in the, for this in the description. Basically, I go to wrathlichkingdb.com, um, and you know, you want, you want recount, right? Or actually, no, instead, let's get gear score, right? You want gear score, you you click on it you click download and in as you see right here in the bottom left corner you will get your zip file so i'm going to show you how to install the add-ons manually if they're not on the launcher what you're going to do is you're going to go on the bottom left of your computer you're going to type ascension launcher you're going to right click on that open file location it's going to pop up you're going to click ascension launcher again right click you're going to click resources client and then interface add-ons and then you get your zip file drag it right into the add-ons folder and you're good to go it's as simple as that now that we have downloaded the game maybe got yourself some add-ons let's hop right into the game shall we i'm going to show you what like basically what servers you could play on and what they are so when you log in, you'll probably be greeted with multiple servers. Let me explain them. Don't feel overwhelmed just yet. So basically, Area 52 is where your character goes at the end of every season. Area 52 is a free pick server. Basically, you can pick any ability you want, and it's literally just free. Like, like it's literally just free pick. You can build any class you want and anything, and it goes till, it's I'm, it's going till Wrath of the Lich King, but currently, as of this video, um, Area 52 only goes to TBC, so you can do TBC with any spec, any class as you would like. Like. 
with Alar though, Alar is their seasonal draft server. A seasonal draft server is, is basically, um, you start at level one and you get a bunch of random ass abilities and you can keep re-rolling to get what, what, what abilities that you'd like to start with. And then at level 10 and every, I think it's two levels onward, you'll be greed with three new abilities that you can choose from and build your own deck. Again, Alar is the complete random game mode. There's also PTR Realms. If you're able to get into the Rexar, this is the um, Conquest of Azeroth. So this is the 21 classes PTR. Again, this is sold separately. Um, so if you'd like to experience the 21 classes, you do got to buy that separately. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the Grizzly Hills Wrath of the Lich King Alpha, if you'd like to play that as well, I'm pretty sure it might be free or you have to purchase it separately. I don't quite know. And then you also have test servers. Test servers are actually kind of interesting to go over because if you like to test builds, you could go on test servers to test your specific builds. That's basically for all the servers. Um, again, today we're going to be talking about both of them, but we're going to kind of be starting with Area 52 because there's not too much to really talk about it. It's very, very simple and plain. So like I stated, Area 52 is basically pick whatever cards you want and, and it also extends into, into TBC. So let's go ahead and talk about Area 52 a little bit because that's not what the, what the majority of this video is about because Area 52 is just kind of plain and simple. Like I said, it is the server where you can pick anything you want, any abilities you want. And by doing that, you get these things every time you level up, you get these things called ability essences. And every ability that is in a ta is, that's in talents, so maybe it's Bladestorm, or stuff along those lines you know what i'm saying you're able to obtain the ability through the talents all of those have a set price of ability essence and again ability essence is obtained through leveling so if if you want you know let's say divine shield right i'm pretty sure that costs six ability essence so that takes six levels to get and keep in mind the leveling one through 60 on area 52 is times seven all the way up to 60 from 60 to 70 is times four five keep in mind though this does have less of a player base because it is not the main reason people come to the server to play but uh, i want to let you guys in on it and basically uh, like what it is and that's that's basically it there's not much really to talk about it's a free to pick it's free to pick and that's basically it moving over to alar because this is what we're going to mainly be talking about today alar is the draft room where you start at level one and you pick three random cards till 60 every two levels from level 10 times three to 60 basically that's the leveling speed it's times three from level 10 to 60 the entire way one thing i want to say about alar as well is that it doesn't matter if you pick horde and alliance because you guys can play with each other anyways because there's not really factions and there's not really classes because again it's a classless private server the only thing that really matters is racials let's go ahead and hop into the game and get your, your character created so i can guide you through this so when you log in you'll be approached with three random cards and the thing that is allowing you to choose these cards is the spell draft deck so now that we have gotten to the game we're going to move to our next segment called rolling abilities this is where i'm going to be talking about basically everything that has to do with rolling abilities and things that you should do at level one one thing I want to talk about real quick, and I'll have a picture of it up on the screen, is the dealer's draft deck. The way the dealer's dr draft deck works is basically uh, you're able to select individual cards that you would like to roll so you get a perfect build. You can use 10 DP, which are donation points, which are, again, store credit that you can use real money to get. But it's not pay to win, boys. It's not pay to win because if you have around 300 gold, you can obtain it as well. The way the dealer's draft deck works is basically, you know, I'm going to use my hands as an example so you roll your cards you roll your cards rolling your cards you get an ability you want and you keep it and then you roll your cards you roll your cards you roll your cards you find another ability you want you get to keep it you could do that four times so you have a perfect build that you would like what normally happens with the regular deck with with the um uh, spell draft deck is you just you, you 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 roll cards. I want this card. You roll cards. Oh, this is a shit card. You know, and then you have to re-roll all your cards. So the dealer's draft deck does help. I wanted to let you guys know about this so you're aware of it. And I recommend getting it as quickly as you can. And I also want to say right off the bat, anything that is purchasable with real life money is able to be obtained with gold inside the game as well. It's mainly pay for convenience. That's what that's what Ascension really is. It's not really pay to buy gear, it's pay for convenience. So you log in and you're approached with three random cards basically. And the thing that is allowing you to pick through random cards is the spell draft deck. So the way it works is, okay, there's a rare, there's a legendary, and there's a common. So if I go ahead and pick this legendary for a sprint, I have a less likely chance to get another legendary. Same 
goes for like this rare right here. I pick this, now I have a less chance to get a rare. Again, I got a rare, but still, you pick another rare, it goes even further down now. And your chances just keep going lower and lower and lower, so you do have to be very vigilant about what you decide to pick. Again, if you have if you have your abilities and you don't like them, you could go ahead and click the spell draft deck again to completely reroll your abilities. But keep in mind, this spell draft deck, you could only use at level 1, so make sure your build is perfect before you go ahead and continue on to your journey. Again, if you roll some cards you don't like, just click it and it'll reroll and you can try again. I just want to cover over some spells that you may see, you know, when you're initially rolling like this. Um, the spells like Tame Pet, basically they count as three ability essence, or basically three abilities. So if you pick that, you're only going to be able to choose one other ability, because it's such a strong ability. Same kind of goes for like Shadow Burn and Drain Soul. If you go Shadow Form and Drain Soul you know your your odds of getting like a void walker or something that uses a soul shard is very is raised basically and since tanks and healers are very hard to come by sometimes um if you do spec into like protection you know stance or whatever, like prot stance as a warrior you know your build will slightly and your rolls will slightly lean towards more of a tankier build because you know the game wants to cater towards if you want to play a tank same kind of goes for healer like if i pick healing touch it's gonna it's it's a you know it's gonna move me closer and closer to getting becoming a healer also one thing i want i want to take note of that you guys are aware of at level one if you know 100 percent that you'd like to play a tank or a healer you could come over to these two npcs and talk to them if you talk to them you could choose basically uh what kind of tank you'd like to play bear prop paladin you know paladin tank whoever it may be and you get these things called skill cards basically you can use two golden skill cards and two non-golden skill cards at level one to guarantee those abilities at, at their respected level so let's say you want wind fury weapon right and you get that at level 30 if, I'm, if i remember correctly and uh, at level 30 you will have a choice to be able to pick that ability keep in mind where we will be talking about skill cards and all that later so don't stress about it right now i just want to make you guys aware that if you want to play a tank you can come over to talk to these guys and basically they give you cards to help become a stronger tank and have better chances of getting taking abilities now i want to move into a bonus segment basically where we talk about challenges completing challenges gets you cool transmogs and they get you cool mounts the challenges that are in ascension are basically iron man which is basically level 1 to 60 without dying with some restrictions like you can't group and you can't do the auction house you can't mail just the original iron man play, play style and then there's also nightmare basically you level 1 to 60 with one life but uh basically you know mobs have a 300 percent damage increase and you only have one life so good luck with that there's also survivalist which is the same rules as iron man 1 to 60 with one life but other players can attack you and there's also the resolute challenge basically you level 1 to 60 with one times xp so you get that classic sort of feel if that's what you would like to do now that we have covered everything basically that has to do with your starting or rolling abilities uh we're going to go ahead and move over into the next segment leveling things you need to know while leveling once you get your core abilities you want to choose a primary stat spirit is basically for healers intellect is basically for casters agility is basically for kind of like hunters and strength are basically for warriors by doing this you literally just go up here and you click which one you would like so again like okay let's say i'm playing a healer okay i need spirit again you know because like, uh, like, like, like like again when i'm talking about like warrior you pick strength like there's really no uh classes it's just like if you're rolling warrior abilities you're gonna want to go to strength right if you're playing you know a caster you're gonna want int stuff along those lines you're gonna make sure that you do that so when you hit level 10 you'll be able to choose if you would like to level as high risk or no risk let me explain this for you guys so basically high risk the high risk rule set basically is you can kill other players and take their loot and their gear um the 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 perks you get from it is that you're able to obtain dungeon gear um appropriate with your item level uh out, out in the open world from random mobs which is kind of cool back in the old days you're able to get an xp increase but uh they 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 took that away basically moving over to no risk no risk you could you could level as P pve so you have no pvp interaction in the open world or you can do no risk pvp which is just a standard pvp server leveling if you'd like to do that as well Another thing I want to explain is that when you hit level 10, um, you will not get a, a basically any abilities until level 10 and upward. So when you're level 1 and you pick your core, your starting abilities, you will not get another ability until level 10. 
And when I say get another ability, I mean you will have a, you won't have a chance to roll three more cards and pick something into level ten. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that. Now while, now, while you're leveling out in the open world and picking your abilities, you're probably going to be like, Panda, how do I level up my abilities? Well, you're going to find stuff like this, these books of ascension right here that, that will be floating by a player or just out in any kind of like, you know, like uh, Stormwind or, you know, in, in any kind of city or town. Basically, you can come in here and train your abilities for free. While leveling as well, every single level, you'll be basically getting some talent essence, which are literally just talent points. Do not let it, you know, it'll be like, oh my God, what's happening? oh my god you know it, it's literally just a talent points and the way you get rid of an individual talent point is by using scrolls of unlearning these are obtained literally by just doing anything in the open world or doing dailies as well but the scrolls of unlearning only basically get rid of one talent at a time you can also use a talent perch which gets rid of all your talents at once if you'd like to respect fully and completely and completely start over your build um if you don't have scroll of unlearning or the scroll perch you can use gold to reset your talents as well you will also see when you level you will see right here the thing called ability essence completely ignore this on this server it has no relevancy at all it only has relevancy on the area 52 server where you where every single level you you get you get ability essence on this server Alar, you get no ability essence at all, so if you play on this server, completely ignore this. There's none in this town, but uh, you also come across people with a green flag above their head. Basically, that means that they are very knowledgeable players, and if you have any questions about anything, you can go ahead and ask them and they will help you. Now that is basically it for leveling. There's really not too much to help you guys with. Um, when it comes to going into builds, hey Panda, what kind of build should I be going for? We will be covering that in another video. I will be covering in, new, in my next video most likely is basically probably like five, three or three to five easy builds that you can go as a beginner to just get the grasp of the game and how builds work and stuff along those lines. So make sure to subscribe and follow so you can look forward to that. I appreciate and love each and every one of you guys. Now we're going to be hopping into our next category basically called hitting 60. What should you do when I, when you hit 60? We'll be covering that. But basically there's three different routes that you can take. I'm going to cover the most complicated one first. So the, the first one we'll be talking about is prestiging. So let's say you're level 60 and like, oh man, I got a shitty build. Like healing touch, conjure water, uh, safe. Like, I, these are all bad abilities. Like, like I literally don't even have a core build. Well, good for you. You can go ahead and prestige. Prestiging is not a bad thing. What prestiging is, is basically you talk to Chromie. I will show you in a second. Um, you talk to Chromie and you go all the way back to level one and you lose everything. Not really though. The only thing you really lose is your talents and your abilities. Your gear, your gold, your mounts, your transmogs, all that stays and it will go in your bag. Also in your bag, you will be getting, I think it's like five skill cards as well for prestiging. You will get 50 gold for prestiging. And you will also get a cachet, which is a box of loot. Um, that is actually pretty good that you're able to unlock when you hit level 60. I, I know I keep bringing up skill cards, but we will cover sk skill cards in depth later on in the video. As well with prestiging is that you get certain you get a certain currency that allows you to buy super cool transmogs and again if you do prestige a hundred times and then like five hundred times that's that's right five hundred times leveling you do get like more cosmetics like a mount and a sword you get a bunch of cool stuff as well for, for prestiging. I'm going to show you guys how to prestige now. So if you come over here and you talk to this midget and you click, I would like to prestige my items. And basically you click the prestigious pamphlet and that'll bring you back to level one. And again, here's all the uh, cosmetic gear that you're able to get. And uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't really fit gnome very well, but it looks cool nonetheless. Now I did say there's three different paths that you're able to take when you hit 60, which are basically PVE, PVP, and prestiging. But there's also one thing I want to cover before we hop into PVP and we hop into PVE. It's your dailies. So on the call board right here, you will see a giant list of dailies. Again, a lot of, you don't have to do all of them. There's certain ones that I'm going to point out to you that I'm going to recommend you doing as a fresh 60, because they're not really that hard to do and they're very, very lucrative. Daily is like, it's time to duel. You literally just go duel, win a duel 10 times. In in most people, if you're new to the game, they'll see it and they'll just let you win. And uh, so you get your free marks of ascension. We will be explaining what marks of ascension are very, very soon. 
Some other dailies that are really easy to do are the ill-gotten goods. You literally can buy these on the auction house and you get in the end, look, you get free mystic runes, you get free mystic orbs, and a lot of mark, mark of ascension. We'll be covering all these in a second. Don't don't worry about it. I got you. And as well with the pro with the proving grounds 1v1, basically just go do a solo queue in 1v1s. You just gotta play 10 games. You don't even gotta win. And also you do get arena points that you could spend turn into honor, which we'll be covering when we talk in the PvP section. So the ones that I recommend you doing at level 60 is doing your basically your Warsong Gulch or Arathi Basin or Eye of the Storm daily, which is just doing a BG. Do your dueling daily, just win or lose 10 games. Do your 1v1, basically same thing, lose or win 10 games. You could also do the ill-gotten goods, which you could just buy, you know, it'll be like get 10 linen cloth. And you just go in the auction house and buy it if you have the gold. Uh, those, so those are the ones basically I recommend doing at level 60. Basically to get yourself a little jump start in the game. Now this is the segment where I'm going to talk about currencies and skill cards. Like I said, we were going to cover it soon and now we're covering it. So for completing quests like this, you're going to get 20 mystic orbs. You're going to get 20, uh, 50 mystic runes and 150 mark of ascension. Let's go ahead and cover the, the mystic orb and the mystic runes first. So you're going to get one of these, but you can also find them on the ground. They're called par uh, portable mystic altars. I know this looks like Panda, what the fuck am I looking at? Like I completely understand I was the same way. Let me break it down for you. On your gear, you have things that are called REs. REs stand for random enchants. Every single piece of gear basically that's from green to legendary is going to basically spawn in the game and when you loot it it's going to come with a legend with a regular re or just any kind of re it doesn't even matter it's just a random re and again random enchant so you could have one legendary one you could have three epic ones but not three of the same epic and then you could have three of just like green or blues you could have three of those as well so let me reiterate one legendary three epics but not three of the same epics but for blues and greens you could have three of the same hopefully that's not too confusing now moving over no moving right across to mystic runes this is what is used for reforging your re's basically what reforging is i will literally show you 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 put the item up here you click it you have a choice between reforging it and extracting we will cover extracting in a second Click Reforge and you will randomly get a new RE. I got Hastery, Hasty Vanish. I don't like that. Reroll it again. I will be covering the XP bar in a second as well. So basically, Mystic Runes are literally just for rerolling for good REs. Now, Mystic Orbs are basically used for enchanting your gear. So let's say that, you know, I want to put Heroic Strike on it. You know, I, I, I can do that and that's what Mystic Orbs are for. So once you have found an RE that you want, you can click Extract on it, but it destroys the item and takes the random enchant out of it. To do that, you need Mystic Extracts. To get Mystic Extracts, you need to reforge enough to, to basically level up here. Every time you level, you'll be granted one Mystic Extract. So hopefully that wasn't too complicating for complicated for you. As well, I'm not going to cover REs because, I mean, let me show you guys. Uh, there's 174 pages of them. Uh, you want to reduce the pushback of your conjure food? Go ahead, brother. Don't let me stop you. Like, there's so many. We're not going to cover them all. Uh, I just want to show you guys the fundamentals, and we'll go over it one more time just real quickly. Uh, Mystic, Mystic Extract is used for taking REs off of gear and putting it basically in your spell books so you can use them on gear that you would like. Mystic Orbs are used for enchanting your gear with the REs that you do have. And, and Mystic Runes are used for reforging gear while you search for REs. Again, you cannot extract green items that have REs on them. You, can't, you cannot extract green items with REs on them. Blue and above, you can. So let's say that I do want Steady Conjure Food, and I don't want that pushback when I'm being attacked while making a snacky. Uh, I could go on the Auction House, type in Steady Conjure Food, and buy it on there as well. So that is another option. So now that we have covered basically the Mystic Runes, runes and the Mystic Orbs, I want to cover a, a Marks of Ascension. You're going to see this big fat dude right here. Basically, you're going to have your specializations. At When you hit level 60, you're only going to have one specialization. What this means is you're going to have one spec. You can have up to like eight different specs and eight different builds on one character. 
All you care about though is just specialization one. And when you click specialization one, you will get a quest that, that, that says like, oh, you need 500 marks of ascension. When you turn those in, you will get five, I think it's around five skill cards and three, you know, basically, ability rerolls and every time you complete this quest and spend a mark of ascension it goes up by 50 capping out is 2000 as as you see right here mine's 2000 to get new to try to get new abilities because i have bad rng i'm actually just gonna do it real quick and spend some marks so you guys can visually see it so as you see i just obtained five of uh, five sealed skill uh skill cards and three hands of fate now what the hands of fate are basically you you right click on it and basically it just says that you'll be able to choose three new abilities but it destroys one of the items so you click yes and you and just like at level one and leveling up you're granted with three new abilities and you pick okay um these are all dog shit, right okay i want detect trap i mean i guess and you learn it but you have to unlearn it, another ability but it's like damn maybe i don't want it and i don't want to lose the abilities what you do is you click the x in the top right corner and you say i want nothing you literally say you want nothing and you could do that up to three times so let's go again shall we nature resist totem okay i guess i'll take that and then uh oh i don't want to get rid of any of this bye bye off and away right that's basically all that that's how you use the hands of fate let's go ahead and move over to the sealed cards basically this gives you a random skill card so you click them and you get random abilities shadow form wow pounce wow righteous defense wow mana feed pog what the random skill cards are is that these these skill cards basically there's there's different kinds there's skill regular skill cards and there's golden skill cards the golden skill cards are able to be bought and obtained with gold the decks are and then you buy the deck with gold you open it up and it's like wow i got nothing and then you do it again i got nothing those are how you get golden skill cards basically this is the way you get regular skill cards and at level one, you could use two normal skill cards and two golden skill cards. So you give up to four skill cards. So let's say you have, you have, I don't know, Devouring Plague, Shadow Form, and then on your golden skill cards, you have Mind Flay and Shadow Word Pain. You can use both of those at level one to be able to choose those abilities at their respective level. So let's say Shadow Form is level 40, and I use that, I use my, this skill card I just got at level one then at level 40, you will be able to choose this ability. Also as well, if you get any, you know, skill cards that you do not want, you could come over here to the skill chart, skill card exchange, and you could turn in five regular sealed cards in for one regular seal card that, you know, you can try to get. Same goes for golden. If you have five golden skill cards that are absolute dog shit that you don't want, you could trade them in for one brand new golden skill card. And that is basically it when it comes to currency, doing your dailies and everything there. Now, Panda, I want to do PVP and I want to do PVE. Um, this is something that definitely is going to be, need to be decided at level one when you're choosing your build. Again, do, do I want this character to do PVE or do I want to do PVP or do I want to do a little bit of both? Because you definitely can. Just know that people that choose PVP specific builds always tend to have the upper hand really if they have like single target cc and you don't you know so just keep that in mind when, when creating your character we're gonna go ahead and start off with pvp though panda how should i gear myself if i just want to do pvp with my build at level six so let's hop right into it shall we so let's say you have a perfect build you have exactly what you want you want to hop into pvp and, and you're getting your ass kicked okay let's hop right into it shall we if you have a solid build and decide to pursue PvP, then you want to spam spam your PvP dailies, like the dual one, the PV, the you know, the 1v1s, and the like worst on gold dailies. You want to do those dailies. On top of that, you want to be spamming as many BGs as you can just to get passive honor. Every win you get about 5,000, every loss you get around 2,000. So you should be able to obtain gear pretty quickly. And again, you have availability to every single piece of gear. Like, like if if, if you're a caster and you want play gear go ahead you can but keep in mind you do kind of want to pick your respective gear to the respective spec so if you're in having plate isn't the move if you're you know a warrior and you're picking cloth that's not the move you kind of want to pick your respective style 
Also, keep in mind, every 100 arena points you have, you could turn into 2,000 honor. So, if you just want to do some 1v1s just to farm some arena points, you know, ooh, I got 200. That's 4,000 honor right there, which is basically a game. So, keep that in mind as well. That'll help you gear faster as well. Another way to obtain PvP gear is Bloodforged gear. You could turn regular PvE gear into PvP gear with the Bloodforged Jar. The only downside, and a lot of people don't really do this, because when you turn that PvE gear into PvP gear, it loses a majority of its stats to where it's not even worth really doing, and I do not recommend doing it. The way I recommend getting Bloodforged gear, Bloodforged gear is basically the PvP gear, is high risk farming. Basically, when you hit 60, you have a good build, you turn on high risk, you go out in the open world, and you kill anything that's level basically above level 50, and you have a chance to get like a, a Bloodforge Zinrock. That's the rarest thing that you could possibly, the rarest PvP weapon that you could possibly get, and I've actually gotten myself one. That Bloodforge gear will have PvP and PvE power on it, which I'll cover right now. So basically, if you see on my character right here where it says PvP power and PvE power, all it really is, it just increases damage at people or at mobs that are level 60. So again, I have a like full PvP power, so I mainly do a lot of damage against other players at level 60. Again, it's kind of vice versa. If it's PvE, it increases damage done to uh, creatures at max level, but decreases the damage taken from them at max level. So hopefully this is making a little bit more sense to you. That's kind of it when it comes to getting PvP gear. It's pretty baseline. Do your dailies, spam BGs, and if you would like to risk it, you can go high risk farming and kill other players or kill creatures that are level 50 to try to get some blood forged gear. You could also buy it on the auction house as always. Now let's cover how to gear for PvE. Panda, um, I don't like PvP. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't like fighting other players. What should I do? What I recommend you doing is basically spamming heroics and spamming dungeons and trying to inform your own group and be like, hey, I need a healer. I need a tank to do, the, to do you know, I don't know, Daramal or, or Strath and try to get a gear corresponding to your class if you'd like. Again, at level one, you kind of need to decide this though. Like, hey, if, if I'm going PvE, maybe I shouldn't pick like a, like a single target CC ability because that's useless in PvE. You just have to decide these things at level one and while you're leveling. As a, uh, you know, a, a PvE player, you want you basically, you want to target item level 63. The reason for this is that at item level 63, you could start doing mythic versions of dungeons, mythic Wailing Caverns, mythic, I don't know, Dara Mall. You can start doing mythic pluses to get even better gear on top of that if you go to the lfg tab and you click random classic dungeon heroic you, you get spoils of war and you might even you know it, it, it basically it does the group for you and same goes for random classic mythic you get gold and you get a, a chest with some pretty good gear in it so if you like to form the group this way you can that is the best advice i have i have for a pve player basically just spam dungeons until you get good gear at level six at item level 63 so you can start doing uh your basically your mythic pluses and that is basically everything. Um, I'm gonna cover professions real quick because that, that's uh, there's not much really to talk about. Um, are, are professions worth doing? Uh, yes, leveling up 100% because you actually get a lot of XP from just doing first aid or anything like that. And especially in end game where there's certain dailies to get like 10 mountains silver sage. You can make a lot of gold in the auction house and it's actually a very safe way to do it. If you don't like high risk farming and you like no risk farming, professions are the way to go for you. Also for like all you enchanters out there, they basically just came out with some new enchants that actually sell for a, a very, very fucking hefty price. Uh, but they're absolutely massive enchants, so if you like to go enchanting, you can make some money there. Um, this is kind of the segment basically where I'm talking about a bunch of just miscellaneous things that you want to keep an eye on. Um, again, leveling, you're going to see people that are going to be saying aura group, basically what an aura group is. And it basically increases your XP by 200% and it lasts 7 days. Or until you hit level 60. Ores are obtained with gold or with real life money, basically donation points. Also as well, there's things called potion of experience. There's also things called potion of experience, basically that can be obtained and they last for an hour and they give you basically a hundred percent more XP. So if you see somebody typing in chat, uh, you know, or a group with head and with uh, XP pots, uh, head meaning basically you could buy head on the auction house or you could buy it um, through the store. Head basically is this little floating head that, that, that gives you all the quests 
for that dungeon so you level even faster keep in mind as well you guys are more, more than welcome to join the twitch and the discord once a week i try to boost new players so if you would like to do that message me in discord or come by the stream i i, I run a full head or xp group all provided by me all my old all, all my hard-earned gold that you know just to boost new players that no no just don't have a 16 would like to try out the game i do that on my streams so make sure you subscribe or join the twitch you know because i try to do it every week and that is basically the beginner's guide to ascension i promise you i probably missed something so if you guys have any questions leave it down in the description uh again in the next video we'll be covering some beginner builds that you guys can try out for yourself um that just help you understand the game a little bit easier uh again this game is massive what they have done they have broken the physics of world of warcraft again i know i probably missed something because there's so much and this video is already so long but i i enjoy and love and appreciate each and every one of you guys again there's timestamps so you can go back and see anything you'd want if you have any questions i beg you to comment down in the description let me know if you guys think of the video and if you like the video subscribe i love each and every one of you guys and i'll see you in the next video peace